welcome to Allen Fieldhouse and tonight the finality of senior night hits home for three Jayhawks. ESPN Wednesday Night Hoops presented by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Tonight, the Texas A&M Aggies travel to Fog Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas to take on the number two team in the land, the Kansas Jayhawks. Let's take a look at the standings of the Big 12's games going on tonight as well. Due to some recent Texas stumbles, Kansas back in the driver's seat at 2 and 12 and 2. Texas A&M, meanwhile, at 9 and 5 due to some stellar play on the road. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones along with Hubert Davis. Thanks for coming aboard. This is the 18th meeting of all time between these two teams. And Hubert, when you speak to Kansas players and coaches, they're not only playing for their seventh consecutive Big 12 title, they're playing for bigger stakes, potentially a number one seed come Selection Sunday in the NCAA tournament. As for Texas A&M, a lot of people pick them at the bottom of the pack. Well, that's why I have head coach Mark Turgeon. I think he has to be in consideration as Big 12 coach of the year. I mean, when you look at Texas a and very talented but young and inexperienced. So for this team to have 22 wins, 9 and 5 in Big 12 play, and be one of three teams having a winning record on the road, absolutely remarkable. Once again, Texas A&M into the NCAA tournament. Aggie's trying to bounce back after losing to Baylor a couple of nights ago. Let's take a look at the special seniors being honored tonight as part of our Star Walk. Well, it starts off with Mario Little, junior college transfer, Brady Morningstar, and Terrell Reed. Three seniors for Kansas will play their last game on this floor in Allen Fieldhouse. All three have combined for four regular season titles, three Big 12 tournament titles, and a national championship. And the greatest part is all three will be graduated come May. Good night for the Jayhawks. Always a good night when they've got the Morris twins in the lineup as well. They're not seniors, they are juniors, but who knows, this too might be their last appearance in Fog Allen Fieldhouse. And they've been on a tear of late. Look at their last three games, 22 and 20 points respectively for Marcus and Marquis doing a great job on the glass as well, shooting a sizzling percentage from the field, 42 and 19 points and rebounds respectively in their last game against Oklahoma. Meanwhile, for Texas A&M, Hubert, their front line, it's going to have a tough time dealing with those guys. LeBeau, Middleton and Walkup back in the starting lineup. Harrison Holmes in the backcourt. Well, you talked about Marcus and Marquise Morris. I think offensively they're the best big guys in the country. They don't have any weakness on the offensive end. They can score inside and out, both hands, use both hands, score on both blocks. You mentioned the Texas A&M front line will have their hands full tonight. court for Kansas who controls the tip. Texas A&M an outstanding defensive team but the number one key for the Aggies tonight is they're going to have to put some points on the board. They're going to have to score. Kansas averages 84 points a game. That's number one in the Big 12. Tyrell Reed gets his team on the scoreboard first with the three-pointer. Now Mark Turgeon told us before the game Hubert he was worried about that first basket for Texas A&M. Why? Well, he wants to get off to a good start, and that's one of the things that Texas A&M does. Pick and roll, they try to slip to the hole. Good defense by Kansas. Morningstar back the other way. Reed on the wing. Both he and Morningstar have shot well from downtown in conference play. Markeith Morris kicks it out to Mario Little with the runner. 
Walk up with the rebound and quickly the other way it's Dash Harris. And here's the guy that Kansas is going to have to keep an eye on offensively for Texas A&M. Chris Middleton, a prolific scorer, a personal scorer, and he's fouled going to the bucket. A senior to senior connection on this first bucket. Well, Mario Little has done a terrific job penetrating and getting into the lane. And Tyrell Reed, one of the best jump shooters in Big 12, being able to knock down that three point jump shot. Fouled against Morningstar. His first personal team first. Well, Mark, you mentioned Chris Milton of Texas AM. He's the one guy on the Aggie team that can create his own shot off the dribble. He has to have a big game tonight. Fires away and off the mark. He's their leading scorer to almost 15 points per game. Good hustle by Walkup, but he couldn't come up with the ball. Here's Morris. That's Mark Keith. I'll tell you, Marcus Morris continues to sizzle. Well, that's the versatility of those big guys. Not only can they score consistently down low on the block, on the block, they feel comfortable out on the perimeter. They can knock down that 15-foot jump shot all night. Boy, walk up being held that time by Marcus Morris. That's his first personal foul. And a homecoming of sorts tonight for Mark Turgeon, the head coach, in his fourth year for Texas A&M, former player here. Won a lot of games, talked about how special it was walking into Fong Allen Fieldhouse. This is the second time that he's coached the opponent in this building. He's also an assistant coach for Kansas for five years under Larry Brown and also Roy Williams. So he's been a player and a coach here at Kansas University. Holmes' pass tipped away. And here's Reed. Morning star inside to Morris. That's Marcus working against Walker. A little bit strong and rebounded by Dash Harris. Yeah, I thought that was good defense by Nathan Walker. Made Marcus Morris catch the ball one or two steps outside the lane. Good contest on the jump shot. Harris trying to be a threat. He didn't score in 14 minutes against Baylor, and he continues his cold shooting. Well, he's not much of a jump shooter. His strength in a pick and roll situation is driving to the hole, draw defenders, and then find Nathan Walker and Chris Middleton out on the perimeter. And a dribble handoff. Here's Reed. Morris out to Reed. They go inside to Markeith Morris, and he's fouled underneath. Fouls against number 10, David LeBeau. Meanwhile, Bill Self, the head coach in his eighth season at Kansas. Last one a national title back in the 2007-2008 season. And as we mentioned earlier at the top of the show, potentially playing for a number one seed from here on in. Reed, this time off the mark, cleared by Middleton. Texas A&M still looking for that valuable important first bucket Middleton off the mark again he's 0 for 2 and yeah, he missed that shot but I like that play that was a drag screen which is a pick and roll in transition got Middleton a nice 15 foot jump shot he will hit that on a consistent basis Marcus Morris inside fouled going to the bucket the foul is going to go against Nathan Walkup, his first personal team third foul as Marcus Morris goes to the foul line, a 67% free throw shooter. Coming off a 23-point game against Oklahoma this past weekend in Oklahoma. I think defensively for Texas A&M, they're going to have to play bigger. Nathan Walkup is more of a small forward. In their last game against Baylor, they played big. They played, they started Ray Turner. I think they're going to have to put him in the lineup. It's not a good matchup against either of the Morris twins down low on the block. Marcus Morris knocks down the first free throw. Still big man who really, Hubert has improved his game and really rounded out his skills during the course of last offseason up to now. Well, he's an outstanding defensive player. He's a consistent rebounder. He can score down low on the block, use either hand, but feels very comfortable out there on the perimeter. And you really have to give credit to Danny Manning, assistant coach over at Kansas on the bench. One of the best big guys in Kansas history, 15-year NBA pro. Doesn't surprise me that big guys at Kansas develop inside and out under his leadership. The foul is going to go against Kansas. 
And against Markeith Morris, that's his first personal. He fouled David LeBeau going to the bucket. Almost four minutes into the first half here, and AM hasn't scored here, but what did they do here? Well, they got the ball to their best post offensive player, and that's David LeBeau. He's the one guy that can score consistently down low on the block. So those two guys, him and Chris Middleton, both of those guys have to have big nights offensively against a team that has really struggled to score in Big 12 play. Elijah Johnson and Thomas Robinson check into the ball game for the Jayhawks. Holmes gets the screen. Kansas switches it. B.J. Holmes off the mark and chased down nicely by LeBeau. Try to post up again, and Tyrell Reed with active hands makes the steal. Inside, Robinson kicks it back out. They swing it weak side, Morningstar. On top to Robinson. Off the mark and rebounded by Dash Harris. We played... Four minutes and 20 seconds, the Aggies still looking for their first field goal, first points. Well, we talked about their struggles offensively. They don't have a guy that on a consistent basis can create a shot, great shot for his teammates. The one guy that can do that is Chris Middleton, but he's been good in Big 12 play. He hasn't been great lately. 12 on the shot clock, here's Holmes. LeBeau faces up. And AM on the board. David LeBeau, the team's high score in their last game against Boy Baylor on Saturday with 14 points and four rebounds. But very undersized for that position, but good hustle that time by Walker. Can Texas AM Hubert play fast and speed this up to give themselves a, a better chance, or is that played I against? I don't think they want to. Right? This is a team that doesn't get very much points out of transition. They have settled in trying to execute in the half court. They're a good defensive team, and they try to get high percentage shots on offense. Man, they've gotten good shots, they just haven't made them, Mark. Off the miss, here's Morningstar. A real poignant scene before tip off. Earlier tonight, as Morningstar joined by the other two seniors in his class, an emotional moment. His father, Roger, who played here out at midcourt, as roses, Hubert, were literally being thrown at the seniors' feet tonight. Great scene on senior night. And Kansas getting an emotional charge out of it. Not that they needed one. Middleton inside to LeBeau. Might have gotten away with a walk, and he missed it. Johnson cross court. Reed had an open shot, drives it to the bucket, and is fouled. 13.50 to go in the first half. Kansas leading by four when we come back to the fall. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Reese's, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter, and in part by Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today and OnTheLine.com because your health is on the line. Sunday, Bulls Heat and Lakers Spurs on ABC. Dorinoka in studio. How did North Carolina and Florida State end? Here you go. Harrison Barnes, the freshman with a big shot in his team down one, and it goes. Carolina up two. Last chance for Florida State. Derwin Kitchen from the living room doesn't go. Carolina has won six in a row. Nice road win in Tallahassee. We'll send you back to Lawrence, guys. All right, thanks a lot, Dari. Kansas leading 6-2. Former Jayhawk head coach Larry Brown amongst those in attendance tonight on senior night. Kind of a reunion night to ev for everyone. You got Danny Manning on the bench for the current Jayhawks coaching staff and Mark Turgeon on the other side. Also played for Larry Brown. Mark Turgeon told us a great story about playing for Larry a little bit earlier. How in one game he came out, he was 5-for-5. Five five. And Larry wasn't fond of him taking a lot of shots at the offensive end. And uh, after he missed that one shot, he was five for six. Larry told him to stop shooting, Hubert. That's, that's not usually how it works, is it? That wouldn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to take me out of the game. Five for five? <laughs> Got to get a couple heat checks up in there. Yeah, Mark Turgeon thinking about at least getting to five out of ten at some point. Yeah. Off the inbound, it's going to be Kansas basketball. 
Elijah Johnson running the point. He's been the starting point guard for the last couple of games during the suspension of Tyshawn Taylor. That shot off the mark by Josh Selby, who's checked into the ball game. And former Texas A&M head coach Billy Gillespie in attendance as well tonight. He was the head coach the last time Texas A&M came here in Allen Fieldhouse and won 2007. AC Law hit a three in that corner to beat Kansas. We were here for game day four years ago. What a wonderful game that was. That's the last home loss, as you mentioned, prior to Texas beating them this year. The floater no good. Andrew Darko missed it and committed the offensive foul. Let's look at Mario Little. A senior playing his last home game. You mentioned Elijah Johnson now. Not in this game, but the two previous games starting at the point guard position. I really like him. He's a guy that can defend. He can distribute and score. Wins win knows to do both things. Takes care of the basketball with him and Brady Mortis are out there on the floor. It's a it's a backcourt that really takes care of the basketball and knows when to pass. Morningstar thought about it, now trapped in the corner. Selby finds a wide open Mario Little. That goes halfway down and out, rebounded by Robertson. Texas AM with just two points so far. Look at this offensive group for the Aggies. The one guy that's going to have to step up is B.J. Holmes. He has the quickness. He has the ability to penetrate, get the ball into the middle, and he's Texas A&M's best outside shooter, 41% from three-point range. Najee Hibbert off the mark. Here's Josh Selby. Threw a tough shot, got his own rebound. Robinson rejected inside. Good defensive play by Robertson. And a foul against Kansas. Actually, they're going to be a timeout. Check that. Sub coming into the ball game. Tyrell Reed for Brady Morningstar. And now Holmes sits down for Texas A&M. So with Middleton and Holmes on the bench, well, they just brought in Chris well, Middleton. Just came in. Also, another guy that can score one or two steps outside the lane. Got a nice 15-foot jump shot. Ray Turner, I mentioned, he started in that Baylor game. Played extremely well. A really aggressive offensive player. It can also establish him down low on the block as well. Boy, they blitz the pick and roll. Jumper no good by Hibbert again. He's a guy that hit two threes against Baylor in this last game. Reed. Good help defense that time by Middleton. Johnson. Good catch by Reed. And rebounded by Texas A&M. Yeah, Kansas offensively shooting too many jump shots. They've got to get the ball down low in the post. That's where their strength is. Throw the ball to Thomas Robinson down low in the block. Baseline jumper good that time by Ray Turner, who started the last game. The freshman, pardon me, sophomore out of Houston. Hey, Kansas's last field goal was with 18.32 to go in the half. As poorly as the Aggies are playing offensively, they find themselves down only two. Selby with the goal. And he's fouled. He goes down hard. The freshman Josh Selby will go to the free throw line for Bill Self when we return. Neither team an offensive juggernaut tonight. AM shooting 18% from the field, KU 15%. And good news for the Jayhawks, though. Tyshawn Taylor back in the lineup after serving a two game suspension for unspecified violation of team rules. Taylor, the usual starting backcourt player and uh, looks like he's going to sub into the ball game. Hubert, what does he bring back to the table for the Jayhawks? Well, Tyshawn Taylor is an outstanding on the ball defensive player. And he does a terrific job of making it hard for opposing point guards to bring up the basketball. I think he's done a nice job distributing the basketball without turning the ball over at the point guard position. But the question is, what's his role going to be coming back into the lineup? You mentioned he missed two games. And in those two games, Coach Bill Self really liked the way that the team was running at the point guard position with Elijah Johnson. 
at the point guard position. So it's going to be interesting to see what role Tyshawn Taylor has coming back into the lineup, what role Elijah Johnson has, and they're still trying to develop a role offensively for the freshman, Josh Selby. Now you talk about bodies coming and going like Selby, like Taylor, who's back tonight for the first time in three games. Bill Self pointed out to us earlier today during the shoot-around period that this is the third time in the 30 games they've played this year that they've had their top nine players available. You put that into the equation, it turns out to be a pretty good coaching job by Bill Self, doesn't it? It, it really has. They've had a number of injuries, a number of guys suspended in and out of the lineup. And you know, heading into postseason play, you really want to have your rotation set. So a lot of decisions are going to have to be made over the next week as they head into the Big 12 tournament. Who's going to play, who's going to be in the rotation, and who's going to be out? That foul is going to go against Marcus Morris. That's his second personal foul, and he'll go to the bench. And for him, it's Mario Little. So Markeith Morris manning the paint now. And with this lineup, one of the ways that I think Texas A&M could score is post up Chris Middleton and shoot around. We notice he is a legit 6'7", so he's a guy at the small four position that can post up and get a high percentage shot down low on the block. Working against Morningstar here. He calls for the ball screen. Middleton with the floater and got a soft touch. That's why he's regarded as one of the top sophomores in the country. Out of North Charleston, South Carolina. And it's a one-point game. The Jayhawks' last field goal came at 18.32 to go in the first half. And the drought continues of over eight minutes. Well, one of the things that I've been impressed about with the big guys for Texas A&M, they're doing a good job of making Kansas to see them get out in transition. And a nice steal and layup. By Tyrell Reed. And this might get Kansas going offensively, getting a couple transition points. Mark Turgeon calls out the play, two down. A good deny defense by Morningstar in the wing, Hubert. Middleton finally gets it. Harris, not a threat that much offensively. Five on the shot clock, and he gets stripped. Little, that's going to be an offensive foul. Fouls against Mario Little. You see Mario Little try to get out in transition, and Ray Turner do a good job of cutting off the basket in. Not much of a push off, but you have to give it to Ray Turner. Good selling job on the push off and the offensive foul. Sometimes defensively you have to act a little bit. Good job right in front of the referees. There's Middleton. There's Middleton finding the shooting range tough right now. He's getting good shots. He has to continue to shoot the basketball. We mentioned before, he's the one guy on the Aggie team that can get a high percentage shot anytime he touches the ball. Oh, Keith Morris missing the finger roll. Oh, rebound by Walker. Wow. Boy. Tough rebound in traffic. That's why he's their leading rebounder. Calls for it at the other end and gets ripped. Reed. Boy, bad decision. Pass. Yeah. Can't throw that live to Tyshawn Taylor. Middleton from downtown got it and look at this we're tied at nine with almost eight minutes to go here in the first half. You know Hubert was so much emotion going into senior night Sometimes and Mario Little getting the start in place of the regular starter in the backcourt. How much does that throw things off, if at all, as Marquise Morris knocks it down? Well, players are used to rotations. Players are used to playing with a certain bunch of guys. And when you bring in a new start lineup, you have different rotations. And sometimes you get out of sync offensively. But you really have to give credit to Texas A&M. One of the reasons why they're 9-5 and five in the Big 12 is they are an outstanding defensive team. Tough shot by LeBeau off the mark, and good putback by Middleton. 
Texas A&M knots it at 11. This is a team throughout the course of the year in the Big Ten on the road. They play very well. They're four and three away from home in conference play. Mark, that's remarkable. That's the best stat for Texas A&M. They're one of three teams that have a winning record in the Big 12 play. That's huge. You've got teams like Oklahoma State that haven't won a game on the road. Missouri with just one. With one, and they're a ranked opponent. Middleton with a high screen from LeBeau. Chance for the Aggies to take the lead. Holmes with the crossover foul. The foul's going to go against Tyshawn Taylor. Mark Turgeon trying to play the role of the returning and perhaps conquering hero tonight. Tied 11 when we return. Dory Noka in studio. How about this update? UAB and Southern Miss coaching battle between former Indiana coach Mike Davis and former Iowa Stater Larry Eustachie. Preston Purifoy, the three UAB, your Conference USA leaders, win in a thriller in Hattiesburg. Meanwhile, right now over on ESPN, Clemson and Duke, it's a two-point Duke lead. Kyle Singler, Nolan Smith, 16 of the Blue Devils, 22 between them. Guys. All right, thanks a lot, Dari. Back here, tied at 11. Neither team shooting particularly well from the field. But that's good for Texas A&M because they're no strangers to close games, 8-2 and two in games decided by five points or less. Hubert, this is a team that at one point during the regular season had won 13 in a row in 16 of its first 17 games overall. Well, we talked about how good defensively they are. Another thing is they take care of the basketball. They're well coached, and this is a team that doesn't lose the teams that they should beat. And we don't talk about that, but that's a talent. We've seen teams over the last week, a Baylor team that has lost to the bottom three teams of the Big 12. You look at Virginia, Virginia Tech, I lost to Virginia twice, and also Georgia Tech. If those teams beat teams that they should have beaten, they wouldn't even be on the bubble. Coach Mark Turgeon's done an excellent job with this young, talented basketball Aggie team. 6.19 to go. Well, they got past that first bucket. There haven't been a lot since. No, have <laughs> Here's the lob for Morris. Wow. Robertson inside puts a silencer on the crowd to knock the game back at 13. Robertson, 6'9 freshman out of Arcadia, Louisiana. Yeah, he can score down low on a post struggle in his last game against Baylor, but had a breakout game in his first matchup against Baylor. Had 11 points and 8 rebounds. Foul underneath on the play. Hubert, you taught me last game we did, ball pressure sometimes on defense goes a long way, right? Well, it really does, because now you look at Kansas, and they had an opportunity to get a good look coming off the pick-and-roll situation, and look at Brady Morningstar, had a wide-open look past alley -oop to Marcus Morris underneath the basket. You mentioned with good ball pressure, that pass would not have happened. Here's Taylor. Knocks this three-pointer down. Tyshawn Taylor shooting 36% from downtown on the season. He's not a great jump shooter, and that's what Texas a and is going to give up. They're going to dig down, kind of double the low post, and let Tyshawn Taylor shoot the ball from the outside. Holmes on the wing, looking inside. B.J. Holmes has been a big part of their recent run. They've won five out of six. It all started with that shot he made at the end of regulation against Colorado. Five on the shot clock. Robertson working against the Morris Twins. Oh, be strong. And Robertson, a third crack at it and gets it to go. Boy, he's battling down there. Courtney Robertson got it to go on the third try. And it's back to a one-point game. Well, he's a big body. He caught the ball down low on the block. Bang, bang, got to the rim. Playing with a lot of confidence as a freshman. Down low on the post. Marquis Morris. Little jump hook, good. Right, with a soft touch. He's slowly shedding that label, Hubert, of the 
less heralded of the two Morris twins. Well, he's a solid big guy. More known before this year as a defender and a rebounder, but being more consistent on the offensive end outside of Derrick Williams of Arizona. I can't think of another offensive player down low in a post more effective than the Morris Twins. Good interior passing. That bucket's going to count by Ray Turner. Angel Morris in the house tonight watching her two sons do some serious work in the paint. Dari Noka in studio coming up at the half wild night in the ACC North Carolina with dramatics in Tallahassee and what ACC team may be creeping away from the field of 68 also Big East the difference between five games or four games or three games in the tournament next week a conference shuffle will straighten out. Guys. All right, Dari back here at the one point game. The Jayhawks with the lead trying to improve to 28 and 2 on the season. And 13 and 2 in conference play right now, leading Texas in the Big 12. Looking for their seventh consecutive conference title. Harris doing good work and committing the foul. Tyshawn Taylor looked at the officials and said, thank you. Well, college basketball continuing tomorrow night with two games at 7 o'clock. Tennessee takes on South Carolina. Then at 9, Wisconsin goes up against Indiana. Thursday night showcase presented by T. Rowe Price on ESPN. Both games also available on ESPN3.com. What a uh, turbulent year it's been for the Tennessee Volunteers and right now uh, teetering right now on the brink. The game at seven o'clock against South Carolina part of a great doubleheader on ESPN. It's been an up and down year for Tennessee seven and seven in the SEC East two and five in their last seven games. And one thing that's keeping them alive is their non conference resume with wins over Villanova and Pitt. Missouri State that just last week won the regular season title in the Missouri Valley Conference played a tough non-conference schedule with South Carolina Kentucky left they're gonna have to get at least eight and eight in the SEC and win one game in that tournament to solidify their birth Kansas leading by three as we approach three and a half minutes to go here in the first half Possessions. Courtney Roberson has done a nice job down low on the post. Want to give him the ball again. Try to establish him down low on the block. Good position by LeBeau. Looking inside, and that's going to be a foul call against Kansas. It's against zero. Thomas Roberts, the 6'9 sophomore. That's the seventh team foul. And David LeBeau goes to the free throw line for the Aggies. David LeBeau uh, able to stay out of foul trouble tonight, unlike in that Baylor game. He spent a lot of time on the bench. A lot of uh, luminaries in the gym tonight. Larry Brown, Billy Gillespie. Played for Larry Brown one year with the Detroit Pistons. Excellent X and O's coach. He's just released by the Charlotte Bobcats earlier this year, but an outstanding coach in college and in the pros. Which Brown has talked about getting back into coaching at some level. And uh, of course, Billy Gillespie, a former assistant coach for Bill Self. Coach Larry Brown spends a lot of time with Jay Wright and Villanova program. Lives in the Philadelphia area and often hangs around practice. Great to help out a Villanova team. You talk about a Tennessee team that's struggling. Villanova as well in the yeah. Big East. But their guard player, Corey Fisher and Malik Waynes, they have really struggled to shoot the ball from the perimeter. Tyshawn Taylor's rolling hook giving Kansas a three-point lead. A very auspicious return for Tyshawn Taylor who missed a couple of games because of violation of unspecified team rules, but a nice comeback game here. 
Middleton bottled up five on the shot clock. You got LeBeau down low on the block against Brady Morningstar. Not the way they drew it up, but they get another opportunity. And Najee Hibbert missing. Another possession and strip. Selby. That's going to be a blocking foul and one. That foul is going to go against B.J. Holmes, and Holmes stood right in there. And I think that's where Josh Selby is at his best in transition, doing a tricky job defensively, getting into the passing lane, getting in the steal, and when he's allowed to get into the open floor, his athleticism, his strength, he's able to score effectively. He just hasn't been able to get out in transition on a consistent basis this year. This is the free throw, and Morningstar catches the rebound. I think that's the one thing missing from this Kansas team. They don't have a perimeter player that late game, late clock situation can go one on one, break down a defense, and create a shot for himself and for his teammates. Is, is Selby potentially that guy? I thought he was that guy. I thought he was coming in much like a Sharon Collins, a guy that can break down the defense, but the ball hasn't been in his hands this year, and I don't know if he can do that. He's still finding his way. Missed the first eight games of the season because of that NCAA suspension. Pass. Nice look inside, and Morris finishes. Boy, Tyshawn Taylor passes. played well. Scoring. Timeout. Jayhawks leading by seven. That's the biggest lead of the game. Kansas upping its shooting percentage in the last several minutes, leading by seven, 149 to go in the first half. A day of action gets underway Saturday with a pair of Big East games. Action begins at noon Eastern as the Cardinals face the Mountaineers. And then at two, two of the top players in the conference matchup as Ben Hansbro leads Notre Dame against Kemba Walker and UConn. College basketball presented by Five Hour Energy on ESPN Saturday. Tyshawn Taylor putting his best foot forward here tonight. Yeah, he's played extremely well defensively. He always does a good job guarding the ball, but he's knocked down the three. Not normally a great jump shooter. Put the ball on the floor, scored in the lane, and just had a great pass down low on the block. He's played extremely well after missing the last two games with the suspension. Nice drive by Walker. But that's going to be called an offensive foul. Well, Nathan Walkup is a versatile small four, can put the ball on the floor and take it to the rim, and that's a tough call right underneath the basket. That is a that is a block, and that's one of the reasons I think the charge block call is the most inconsistent call in college basketball. And I have no idea why they don't adopt the NBA area. rule and have that restricted area. They did it at the beginning of the year in selected tournaments, where they had that semicircle to give a visual to the referees whether it's a charge or a block call. They have to put that into the game. You have to get that call right. That foul against Walkup, a pivotal one, Hubert. It's his third, which puts him on Turgeon's bench. 123 to go here. High ball screen for Tyshawn Taylor. Heat check. Oh, he deserved that one. Got right to the cup. Holmes in transition. Got a good look and knocked it down. B.J. Holmes is the guy most responsible for the Aggies run in winning five of the last six games. And Mark Turgeon, their head coach, Hubert, talked about how they practice better. They're starting to get it. Their leadership from the seniors is a lot better. Coming from Holmes and Walkup, and this team doing some good things. Mark Turgeon, back in familiar surroundings here, former player. From 84 to 87, he was the first player in Jayhawk history to play in four consecutive NCAA tournaments. Helped the team to a 108 and 33 record under the guy we saw a moment ago, Larry Brown. Look at the haircut, had the nice little part in the side too, Hubert. <laughs> team captain a couple of seasons as well. Now, is Larry Brown as hard on point guards as he's hard with? on everybody? Okay. All, right. When, All right. When I played for him, I was 34 years old. We were practicing. Three hours a day. I said, come on, coach. <laughs> well, you can't blame Larry Brown for no. Mark Turgeon's hair thinning out a little bit. Well, he's still got a <laughs> somewhat full cloth there.
But Larry Brown is an outstanding coach, really loves teaching the game, and everywhere that he has been, individual players and teams have improved. Here's Reed. Under a minute to go in the first half. Just a four-point game. Selby walking down the three. And that's the first time today that I've seen him shoot the ball with good arc. You were in shoot around, flat shot, first couple jumpers, not a lot of arc. That time he got some arc on it and it went in. It was a beautiful jump shot, good form by Josh Selby. Made it in the top 10 of the ESPN 100 a year ago. And Dash hey, Harris hey, knocked Dash. down the two ball. You don't see that happen that much. He averages only four points a game. The lead is five, and they're going to run it down here with Tyshawn Taylor on top. Selby for three. Middleton with the rebound. He gets called for the walk, although he may have gotten clobbered. Middleton getting up slowly. Although he might have gotten hit by his own guy. Let's take one more look here, Hubert. That might have been his own man that he knocked him to the court. If you want to pay attention, Kansas has great out-of-bounds plays underneath the basket. Not only get the ball in, but they get great shots out of these sets. Aggie sub in a little size. Marquise Morris misses from the corner, and that's the end of the first half of play. The Jayhawks have won 27 consecutive home finales and 26 straight on senior days. This is their last home game before going to Missouri to play in their annual border war. Right now, we're going to send it to the halftime studio show. Dari Noka, Jimmy Dykes. Guys, take it away. Welcome back, everyone, to Wednesday Night Hoops, presented by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. We're at Fog Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas at halftime. Kansas leading Texas A&M in a surprisingly low-scoring game, 29-24. to 24. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones, along with Hubert Davis. Thanks for coming aboard. This is the 18th meeting all time between these two teams. Hubert, it's senior night. Kansas playing potentially for a number one seed, yeah. their seventh consecutive Big 12 title, but maybe the most surprisingly pleasant thing tonight that's happened is boy Tyshawn Taylor coming back and doing a great job you know I was really impressed with him uh, at the point guard position this is a guy that's coming back after missing two games being suspended and you know he started 27 games for Kansas at the point guard position but he's always a good defensive player started off got a deflection allowed Kansas to get into the open court but his ability on the offense and put the ball on the floor nice floater inside the lane good pass down low to Markeith Morris underneath the basket was able to knock down a three-point jump shot and more importantly zero turnovers at the point guard position he's starting back in the starting lineup here starting the second half and I was really impressed with him on both ends of the floor in the backcourt Tyshawn Taylor if you're just joining us missed a couple of games because of violating unspecified team rules team on the blocks on LeBeau. Middleton trying to make something happen. Robertson blocked before he could even get rid of it. And Kansas comes back the other way with it. And that's another turnover for Texas A&M. They have nine turnovers in this game. And this is a team that really does a nice job of taking care of the basketball. Fortunate that Kansas missed that shot. Low position down low on the block for Kansas. Over the double team. Boy, tough shot and make by David LeBeau. It's a good shot. Nice 10 foot jump shot, but David LeBeau needs to understand that every time he catches the ball, Kansas is now double teaming on the post. So he's got to look to be a passer, find open shooters like DJ Holmes and Chris Middleton from three. 
Reed, who got up to a good start in the first half, passes it to Morris. Marcus Morris finds nothing but net. He has seven in the game. Those big guys defensively for Texas A&M, even out on the perimeter, have to put pressure on Marcus and Marquise Morris. They can knock down that 15-foot jump shot, make them put the ball on the floor, and make a play from the perimeter. Harris pulls it out. Looking for Holmes off the screen. Six on the shot clock for B.J. Holmes. Gets the switch. The taller Morris trying to guard him. Fade away no good. And the putback finally good by Robertson. Boy, Courtney Robertson's been a pleasant surprise tonight. He really has. He's a big body. Really strong down low on a post. Physical defender can score down low on a block. He also had a nice first half for Texas A&M. Now with six in the game. Morningstar cut off. Cross court, Tyshawn Taylor. Nice speed inside to Markeith Morris. And a chance now for Texas A&M to pull within one or even tie it up on a three. LeBeau goes with it quickly and is fouled on the play by Morris. Fouled by Markeith Morris. That's his second. Well, every time Texas A&M throws the ball down low on a post, Kansas is going to double team right here down low on the block. He tries to split the double team and was able to hit the shot. But as I said before, he's got to understand in that situation, you have to be a passer. So that means one guy is open, and DJ e. Holmes and Chris Middle can, can knock it down from three-point range. Boy, Taylor was a blur wow. down the court that time. Tyshawn Taylor going with the turbo. Mark, this is the best that I've seen him play on both ends of the floor. I talk about how consistent he is defensively. But on the offensive end, this is what they need from him on a consistent basis. The lead up to five. Ash Harris thought about it. That's going to be a charging foul against LeBeau. His second. Well, Tyshawn Taylor is very good in transition, and Kansas does a great job boxing out. And Tyshawn Taylor, who had a very nice first half, was able to get the ball in transition, take it all the way to the hole. Young man that's had his turbulent times here at Kansas. There was the Facebook controversy as he fires another jump shot, this time coming up a little bit short. Great hustle by Morris. Morningstar. And the senior gets on the board for the first time tonight. Well, they really lay off the Dash Harris. Can't give Holmes much room because he'll do that to you. He's a great jump shooter, 41% from three-point range, but he's not a scorer. He needs to be more aggressive on the offensive end. It brings his team to within five. We're talking about Tyshawn Taylor in the last possession. Broke his thumb last year in that altercation with some members of the football team at the Facebook or Twitter controversy. And now this year, as Dash Harris on a mad dash to the hoop is foul. Fouls against Marquis Morris. Pardon me, Marcus Morris. But a good comeback tonight for Taylor. Back after this. Sunday, Bulls Heat and Lakers Spurs on ABC. Jayhawks looking for their seventh consecutive share of a conference title. Leading by five with 15.43 to go. Larry Brown, the former Jayhawk coach, former NBA coach in attendance tonight. And Hey, got some NBA action coming your way on Friday. 7 o'clock Eastern, Bulls taking on Orlando. Then at 9.30, the Heat take their NBA best road record to the Alamo City to take on the Spurs, who have the best record in the entire league. ESPN's NBA Friday, also available online at ESPN3.com and on your phone. At the, line, at the line, it's Dash Harris out of Los Angeles, California. Went to prep school. Uh, High school at on Bird Academy in Central Florida. Hey, we talked about the Miami Heat. What about Mario Chalmers after recovering finally from that ankle injury that he suffered way back in July? 
found his legs underneath him and much healthier now in December. Now the starter in the backcourt for the Heat. Yeah, that's Miami. Miami. Mike Dibby. Yes. After getting weighed by the Wizards, giving up $6.2 million to be a part of the Heat. You're still having a hard time on the math on that, aren't you? Uh, you know, <laughs> playing for a championship is great, but $6.2 million is great also. <laughs> I'm not giving up that money. <laughs> He has eight. And he's shooting right around 40% on threes for the season. Lead back up to six. Najee Hibbert drives it to the cup. Took a little bit of a hit. Markeith Morris drive and kick. Working against Walker. Tyrell Reed on the drive. Went high. Wow. Good move. And one, and he stuck the landing too, but he's called for the foul. Oh, Tyrell Reed, known as a jump shooter, but putting the ball on the floor, taking it strong, and from that angle, it looks like Texas AM right underneath the basket again. Calling another charge. We mentioned before the need for that semicircle, adopt the rule from the NBA to give the visual for the referees to determine a charge and block call. Two bad calls. And walk up underneath the basket. Gets the three at the other end. It's back to a three point game. That's his first field goal. And somehow standing underneath the bucket doesn't seem to imply you're playing defense. On the break, and a great recovery. On Ray Turner by Markeith Morris. You see the drive by Terrell Reed and I said he stuck the line. Right underneath the basket. Because of a bad call on the other end leads to a wide open three by Nathan Walkup. Possible and one situation for Kansas taken away, and then you got a three for Texas AM on the other end. Kansas has won 74 of its last 75 games here at Frog Allen Fieldhouse. But before that 69 game winning streak was snapped by Texas earlier this year, the team to beat them previously were these very Aggies. Under 14 minutes to go. And Darko turns it over. Keith Morris from downtown. Wow. What a screen by Walker. They've got to call the screen. Mario Little made a mistake defensively. Morningstar has it knocked away, and that's going to be a foul call. Hubert, that's where. Johnson's got to turn to his bigs and say, you know, help me out a little bit, right? Well, that was Mario Little's Little. mistake. Elijah Johnson doing a great job picking up the ball, good ball pressure, and that's Nathan Walkup setting the screen, and you can see Mario Little screen, but he was too far away. Better communication with your point guard so he doesn't get hit on that pick. Let me ask you this, in a building this loud, how do you yell that out and still have your teammate hear you and stop that from happening that we saw. Well, I thought Mario Little saw Nathan walk up in that position to set the screen. So you've got to be up there with them. You've got to let your point guard know, hey, look on your left, look on your right. Here comes the screen. I know it's loud in this building, but you can still be able to communicate to your players or where the defenders are. Well, he took a hit. That's the fourth foul against Nathan Walker. There's a bench warning issued against Texas a &M. as Brady Morningstar goes to the foul line. One of the three seniors playing his final home game here at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. Roger, his dad, a former player here. He was in attendance during the festivities pregame. And Morningstar, after a real slow start to the season, has really picked it up. There's a look at dad right there, former player here. and. Uh, Pretty morning star shooting over 50% from three point territory during league play. 
He was the first one in the gym and the last one to leave during the time he was in a slump and got out of it subsequently. That foul is going to go against Little. Look at dad at the players. Love looking at the black and whites, Hubert. <laughs> and the short shorts. And the fake action photos <laughs> that are done pre practice. I tell you. I love those. The uniforms have changed, but <laughs> this building hasn't that much. No, it and hasn't. That is a good thing. It's like Dash Harris had a contact jarred loose. A good show of sportsmanship there from Mark Keith Morris. Coach Mark Turgeon talked about how things have stayed the same here at Allen Fieldhouse, with the exception of the locker rooms and the yeah. practice gyms yeah. and the practice facility and the hallway. He took a tour after shoot around and was very impressed with the with the new additions. Hey, college basketball continues tomorrow night with a couple of games, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Tennessee takes on South Carolina. And at 9 Eastern, Wisconsin goes against Indiana. Thursday night showcase presented by T. Rowe Price on ESPN. Both games also available online at ESPN3.com. Championship week coming down the bend, Hubert Davis. This is arguably the best month of the sports calendar. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. I can't wait. Approaching 13 minutes to go. Boy, Middleton's been quiet. How do you get him going here? Well, Brady Morningstar has done a nice job defensively. I, I said in the first half, he has he's six seven, so he has a height advantage. Why not post him up? Be able to get the ball down low on the block, get to the free throw line. Has to continue to stay aggressive offensively. LeBeau took a tough contested shot and came up short. Here's Selby. Reed breaks free. Little with the shot. And halfway down and out, here's Dash with the new contact put in. Dash Harris up court. But David LeBeau down low on the block against. Foul on the play as Najee Hibbert is shaken up. And Markeith Morris threw an elbow underneath the basket. It's going to be interesting to see if the referees check the monitor on this. And Najee Hibbert went to the hoop and got fouled. Fouls against Little. Watch right here after the play. Threw an elbow right to the cheek. That certainly was. As Najee Hibbert gets to the lane, look at that elbow right to the cheek. And We've seen both Morris twins at times this year throw West elbows. Yes, they which, have. Kansas that's, that's, State. That's be the Cal game, yeah. exactly. It's interesting that the Texas A&M staff didn't request the referees to go look at the monitor. Hibbert knocks it down. Eight down to six points with 12-14 to go. Texas A&M coming in at 9-5 and five in Big 12 Conference play. They've won five of the last six games. They're coming off a loss in their last run against Baylor. But this is a team that was picked to finish in the bottom third of the conference by the so-called prognosticators and experts. Mark Turgeon doing a great job of coaching this year. Good defense. They get the turnover. They've got numbers. That situation. I really like when Dash Harris is more aggressive trying to get the ball to the hoop. Harris with the shot. That's not his shot. I like when he drives and gets into the lane and draws defenders. A foul is going to go against Robinson. That's his second personal. The Aggies still hanging around. They know what it's like to win here at Fog Allen. That's where their only win in 17 tries has come against Kansas. Welcome back, everyone, to Fog Allen Fieldhouse. Former Texas A&M head coach Billy Gillespie knows what it's like to be victorious here at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. You go back to 2007 when he was the coach there. AC lost shot from the corner, sealed the deal here, and Kansas 
took their first loss to a Big 12 South opponent. Since that loss, the Jayhawks won a 69-game winning streak here before finally losing this season to Texas. But uh, that a rare moment and a rare victory. When I say rare, I mean they've lost 16 out of 17. <laughs> they see Law that year made a bunch of clutch they shots did. for them. Prior to that three, he had a nice floater into the lane, so he had the last five points of that game. And now AC Law having a nice pro career for the Atlanta Hawks right now. 11.46 to go. E.J. Holmes had a nice look out of that out of bounds play underneath the basket. I mentioned before, he's a good jump shooter. He has to be aggressive. When he's open, he's got to shoot the ball. He's the real personality of this Aggie team. Tried to get loose off the flare, and that's going to be a foul against Josh Selby. That's his first personal. It puts him in the one-on-one. The one. Yeah. That's their seventh. As it puts Texas A&M on the line with a lot of time Hubert left here in the ball game. 11.28 to go. Texas A&M does a great job of getting to the free throw line. DJ Holmes actually is a good free throw shooter, but more importantly, it allows Texas A&M to set up their defense. So now Kansas offensively has to go up against a set defense of Texas A&M, and they're pretty good. Holmes makes the first. He's a 77% free throw shooter. And he was largely responsible for that nice run that they've been on of late. That clutch shot at the end of regulation against Colorado sent it in the overtime and then made some big plays in overtime for the win. That was on the road. This is the second of two. A self professed piano playing comedian. <laughs> That BJ rarely Holmes. plays the piano. Yeah. <laughs> we got to look into that piano playing part. It's a little, a little suspect, admittedly. Shot no good inside by Robinson, and now a He's chance. He's well, hasn't yeah. he? he? Has to cut the lead to three. Middleton has been extremely quiet, conspicuous by his silence offensively. He's talked about in Big 12 play that they've been more physical with him, especially when he puts the ball on the floor. He's getting a lot of attention. That's why B.J. Holmes got to knock down that three, give him more space to drive to the hole. Fouls against Robertson. Pardon me, that's a traveling violation. You know, back to Middleton. He hasn't scored since the 10-18 mark of the first half. At some point, he's going to have to make it a mark on this game if they're going to be successful, so you would think. He's had big games. He had 28 against Missouri, 31 against Arkansas in non-conference play, so he's a guy that can get it going offensively. Inside, Robinson. And Harris pulls down the rebound. Taylor Robinson is such a big body, gives away that position down low on the block, but he's able to hold it. Kansas big guys are having a tough time scoring over Courtney Robertson, the freshman down low on the block for Texas A&M. Here's Holmes, and Holmes knocks down the long ball. It's down to a two-point game with 10 minutes and two seconds to go in the second half. Texas A&M hanging in. Hey, there's a lot of questions about whether they'd be motivated to play, having already wrapped up a bye in the first round of the conference tournament. Well, you've got your answer. They've got the lead down to two. Dory Noka in studio. We update the first game for BYU without Brandon Davies, who's been kicked off the team for violating BYU's honor code. They're playing New Mexico and in trouble. Lobos up 12 right now. Philip McDonald with eight for New Mexico. We're watching, guys. All right, thanks a lot, Dari. BYU uh, going through a little adversity as we take a look at the polls. Kansas at number two, BYU at number three. How do you think it affects BYU down the stretch? Well, in terms of Brandon Davies, he's their leading rebounder, and he was a guy that could score down low on the post, and he's a big guy that can knock it down from 10 point range. And Beautiful play out of a timeout, and Elijah Johnson showing at the point guard position. He has a little bit of athleticism as well, finishing above the rim. Look good in a couple of starts for Tyshawn Taylor.
Nash Harris off the mark, rebounded by Robertson. That's his 10th rebound for tonight. That's his career high. The freshman Robertson doing a great job on both ends of the floor. Is Chris Middleton doing enough to make himself a force of the offense? No, he's not. He's got to be more aggressive. I know Brady Moore starts a good defensive player, but in this situation, you're the one guy that can create your own shot. You have to demand the basketball, and you have to be aggressive offensively. Here he is with the pill. Go at him. Go. Six seconds on the shot clock. He gave it up to Holmes. Put him in a tough spot. And that's going to be a shot clock violation. So you see Elijah Johnson right there, midcourt. This is a set play. Marcus Morris, Markeith Morris sets a nice screen for Elijah Johnson for an alley-oop dunk. Pretty nice when you set up your big guys to throw a lob to your point guard. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad, is it? A little roll reversal there. <laughs> wow. 8.45 to go. Morris sets a screen for his twin. There's Marcus, quick first step, but he couldn't cash in. Hibbert in front court. Okay, now with Chris Middleton out of the game, the guy that's going to have to be aggressive is B.J. Holmes. Also, David LeBeau and Courtney Robertson down low on the post have been aggressive as well. They cannot try to score with 10, 7 sec seconds on the shot clock. Look for early opportunities in their offense. Six on the shot clock. They go deep into the clock again. Dash Holmes had a good D. Great defense by Elijah Johnson. Reed. Got the foul from Holmes. And Holmes got all of them. AM had a chance to cut it to two. Back with more after this. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Reese's, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter, and in part by Volkswagen. Energy, we cross the hall. Gravity, we bounce the ball. Tenacity, I'll beat you all. So make your play and I'll watch you fall. Gary Noke in studio. We promised we'd keep you posted. BYU a one seed, according to Joe Lenardi, number one RPI, getting blown out at home by Kendall Williams in New Mexico. James Anderson starting in place of Brandon Davies, who's been kicked off the team. Two points. Two fouls, all Lobos in Provo. Meanwhile, over on ESPN, Duke leads Clemson by a touchdown, seven and a half to go in Durham. We're watching that one. It's again over on ESPN, guys. Hubert, how does it affect the team when you lose a key piece like Brandon Davies tonight? It crushes the team. The momentum they had after beating San Diego State on the road. Being in first place in a Mountain West Conference, having a chance to be a number one seed in the NCAA tournament, Jimmer for dead or not, losing a key piece of the puzzle. And Brandon Davis, we talked about it, how effective he was on both ends of the floor. That is going to crush BYU for the rest of the year. Up to miss, Kansas with another possession. Reed from the corner. Got it. a better script for Reed on his last game here at home on senior night. Yeah, but he was set up on a play. Good pass by Elijah Johnson. and Good point guard play for Kansas. Elijah Johnson in the second half. Tyshawn Taylor in the first. Reed, part of Kansas' national title team in 08. Kansas is such a good passing team. They pass up good shots to get great shots. Elijah Johnson could have taken a shot in that situation, but found Terrell Reed right there in the corner for three. Look at his sister, Lacey Reed, who was a manager on the basketball team a couple of years ago. She graduated last year. Look at Ma 
mom and dad. Seven and a half minutes to go. Each time the Aggies have gotten close, Kansas has expanded its lead and a nice play coming out of the timeout. They go to Middleton. He posted up down on the block. He's 6'7 at the small four position. He has a post up game. You might as well use it. Let's we'll see what they do this time down the floor. You know, the NBA, if you have a play that works, they will go at it and two defensively, you stop it. Let's see if Texas A&M throws it right back down to Middleton, down low on the block. Oh, they turn it over. Didn't even get an opportunity to do that. Holmes coughed it up. Morningstar. And Morningstar has seven. Biggest lead of the night for Kansas. against home. AM over their season average for turnovers tonight. That was their 16th of the evening. You know, Bill Self talked about Morningstar and Reed and talked about them being local kids from Kansas. And it's at the point now where they don't win if those two guys don't play well and do certain things. They're great defensively, and they complement the big guys, Marcus and Marquise Morris, down low on the block. See, they're not double-teaming Texas A&M because they're worried about Brady Morningstar and Terrell Reed shooting the ball from the perimeter. That was the third personal foul against LeBeau. In the second half, Morningstar and Reed have helped Kansas go five for five from downtown. Marcus Morris at the foul line. This game really improved along with his brothers, Marquise. Uh, this past summer, Marcus, a member of that all-star college select team that played against Team USA, the group that ultimately ended up going to Turkey and winning the world championships of basketball. And Marcus telling me a little bit earlier, he learned a lot playing against uh, some pretty high-level competition, including the likes of Amari Stoudemire. I wish every college player had an opportunity to, in the summertime to play and understand the length and athleticism that's at the next level. Oh, Tyrell Reed just dogging Middleton in a show of a mutual respect there as they gave each other a little tap. You know, we've talked about Chris Middleton. Remember, he's only a sophomore. From a skill standpoint, he has everything to be one of the best players in the Big 12. But as he matures, he's got to get tougher. He is the one guy that can take over this game offensively for Texas A&M, and he has to be aggressive. Holmes off the mark. He's had a tough night at the offensive end. Middleton with the miss. Our Keith Morris. That's a next level type of move right there. He has 11. The twins have been doing it for a long time together. Here's Marquis. You see him get great position down low on, a on the block and beautiful right hand jump hook. And the bitch going crazy. Well, this goes back some time. These two have a, a history of success on the court. Back in 07 at the Pennsylvania Class AA Championship game, Prep Charter trailed with just under four minutes to go, and then the Twins led a 20-4 run, and then Marcus made the game-winning free throws right there to seal the victory for Prep Charter 68. To 66. The Morris Twins combining for 11 points, 11 rebounds. Marquise had a big night. Tell you what, when you're that good, you get a pretty 
High tech poster. That was pretty good stuff. <laughs> that was nice. I thought it was nice. That was comic book hero quality. Nice. It was a look at Mom Angel in attendance tonight. Yeah, we talked before the game. You know, they played together in high school. They played together, obviously, in college. And they take the same classes. They live together. It's going to be interesting how they adjust when they go to the next level and have to play on different teams. And, uh, they got identical tattoos as well. Brooke and Robin Lopez yeah. from, from Stanford now playing on different teams, New Jersey Mets and the Phoenix Suns. Bill Self has only one regret, that there's not another set of <laughs> twins coming <laughs> from the Morris household. See what the Aggies do out of this timeout. Well, Middleton's trying to penetrate, but David LeBeau is in his way. He's got to clear out and be able to give him some space. But good pass by Middleton down low to LeBeau. LeBeau finishes with the finger roll. He has eight. Out of bounds, and it'll be Aggie basketball. Under five minutes to go. Still plenty of time, but Texas A&M has been held at arm's length for most of the night. Here's LeBeau trapped. Harris to a wide open Holmes for three. Nice rebound. LeBeau with the left hand with a nice finish. There's that two nice possessions back to back, being able to score underneath the basket. And a timeout as LeBeau putting another night of good work. He had 14 points in that loss at Baylor. He was the team's high scorer. Well, a day of action gets underway Saturday with a pair of Big East games. First of all, at noon, Louisville takes on West Virginia. And then Notre Dame takes on UConn at 2 o'clock. College basketball presented by Five Hour Energy on ESPN Saturday. And, and Hubert, if, uh, if we get another Louisville cheerleader story, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, that's excited. about as odd as it he gets was excited. in college basketball. <laughs> he was passionate about the Cardinals. <laughs> hey, let's talk about the conference here. Saturday, it's Big East. Here, it's Big 12 right now. How many teams you figure from this conference get into the tournament? Well, I think right now, uh, definitively five. I mean, I think you have Texas, you have Kansas. Kansas State's won five games in a row. Uh, you have Texas A&M. Um, I think the two teams that right now are on the bubble are Baylor and Colorado. Colorado... They played tonight, Iowa State. They were 7-7 seven and seven yeah, in Colorado, conference play. Colorado losing tonight. They're losing tonight. Now they're 7-8. and eight. Both Baylor and Colorado, 7-8. and eight. And remember, there's not one team in the Big 12 that's got to the NCAA tournament below 500. So 8-8 eight and eight is the number. Great pass inside the Marquis Morris. All to keep in score on the sidelines there in the stands. The lead back up to 11. It was we approached four minutes to go. Also, didn't mention Missouri, a team that has struggled on the road. I think they're a definitive NCAA tournament out of the Big 12 as well. And that's where Kansas goes on Saturday. Johnson out top. A little pick and pop with Marcus Morris. He's got 12. Kansas with three players in double figures. Well, you can look at Kansas. They're an outstanding passing team. Great execution in the half court. Beautiful lob pass to Marquise Morris underneath the basket and then a pick and roll situation. Elijah Johnson finds Marcus Morris out there on the perimeter wide open in the three point range and mom is enjoying her son's success out there on the floor. You know, it's been interesting offensively, the point guard situation at Kansas. Tyshawn Taylor, I thought was the story in the first half, and in the second half, Elijah Johnson's played really well defensively, getting steals, done a nice job distributing the basketball. What a luxury Kansas has to have two point guards that they can put there and 
run their offense and be sound defensively. Things seemingly coming together at the right time for the Jayhawks. It's the first time, actually the third time in their 30 games that they've had their top nine players available. Dash Harris. Walk up inside to LeBeau. Nice drop step move against Morris. And the foul is going to go against Marquis. Big night for the seniors. Morningstar, Reed, and Mario Little. Playing their final minutes, final seconds here at Bog Allen Fieldhouse. And their parting gift just might be their seventh consecutive Big 12 title. in Las Cruces college basketball it's pajama night for the students and they're thinking it's a real big game and why not New Mexico State hosting the 21st ranked Utah State Aggies Black basketball coming up next studio this is correct New Mexico 16 up at BYU in BYU's first game since the dismissal of 6-9 forward Brandon Davies. Jimmer Fredette just 2 for 9 from the floor. BYU shooting 25% as they trail by 16, guys. All right, guys, and back here, Kansas leading by 13 with 3.04 to go. LeBeau at the foul line. And a pretty good night for the seniors. And a good return this evening for Tyshawn Taylor after missing the last two games. Due to a suspension for violation of Unspecified team rules as LeBeau drops both. Lead down to 11. Kansas looking for its 28th win of the season against just two defeats. Johnson with a lob. Pass. Pass. Kansas doing a great job breaking full court pressure. And once again, Elijah Johnson making the right pass. Marcus Morris underneath the hoop. Bow inside had it packed by Morris. Here's Johnson. Hard start with the ball screen. Morris a stare down three over walk up and his twin brother says I got your back under two minutes to go in another Kansas possession time. Mark Turgeon calling for a foul and Holmes fouls Tyrell Reed yeah, on the last possession Texas A&M Picked up full court and they were able to break pressure Kansas and Elijah Johnson made the right pass to Marcus Morris underneath for the dunk. And here's a look at tonight's Reese's perfect play. Yeah, pretty good out of the timeout. They were struggling offensively and they called a lob play for their point guard. Elijah Johnson, great pass from Marcus Morris. Here's Marcus out top. Crossing up walk up. Walkup made a nice recovery for the block out of bounds. It'll be Kansas basketball. Kansas looking for their 13th league win against two defeats. And they'll play Missouri in their season finale in Columbia. And we saw that team last week, and they're a much different team at home. A team that doesn't have very much length in the front court, but their guard play with Phil Pressey and Michael Dixon and Marcus Denman. That's going to be a great game on Saturday. I'm predicting it'll be a little faster than this one. <laughs> Just a touch. Just a touch. Mike Anderson's team built as the fastest 40 minutes in basketball. Middleton turns it over. It's a three on two. Morning star. Yes. 
And the Aggies look a little deflated right now. That might have done it. The leads up to 15 as we approach a minute to go. LeBeau with a tough shot off glass. And a timeout call. LeBeau has 14, matching his high from the last game against Baylor. Okay, coming up next, Utah State taking on New Mexico State. Saw pajama night there, huh? <laughs> what about that? Tell you. It's Kansas just... about to put Texas A&M to sleep. <laughs> Under a minute to go, and Bill Self's team looking at a potential number one. Are they a number one seed in your book? I, I, I definitely think they're a number one seed. I think the three best teams in the country, Kansas, Texas, and Ohio State. I still think Texas, even though they have recently struggled, particularly on the defensive end, losing games in conference play, I still think those are the three best teams in the country. I think what's going to be up and down is that fourth number one seed, especially with BYU struggling right now. Well, you look at that sign, back to back to back to back to back to back. That would make six, and a win tonight gives them at least a share of their seventh consecutive Big 12 title regular season. At the beginning of the year, a lot of people, including myself, picked Kansas State to win the regular season title. And now well, Kansas State is a team that's won five games in a row in Big 12 play, really starting to play their best basketball late here in the season. We send out our best to uh, recovering head coach Frank Martin of Kansas State at knee surgery. Good to see Jacob Pullen is okay after. Injuring his right hand in that game against Texas. When I talked about Kansas missing a playmaker late clock, late game situations. I wasn't meaning Marcus Morris out there at the top yeah. of the key. Well, they move it around, burn a little clock. Yes. That would have been a great exclamation point by Mario Little, the senior, out of bounds. Texas A&M basketball. After the game, log on to ESPN3.com for complete post-game coverage of Kansas Jayhawk Senior Night. You can hear the customary speeches that are made here by the seniors. The senior coming out now, Little. The three seniors taking a bow. Morning Star and Reed, two of the winningest players in Kansas history. Grace and Jeff Whitney. They replace Barkey and Marcus Lawrence. And now the Morris twins come out. Hey, they're only juniors, but here with the possibility lingers and the question begs, might this be their last game? I hope they stay in college, but in terms of basketball skill, listen to the fans. One more year. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Mom's taking notes. <laughs> 18 seconds to go, and Texas A&M going to fall to 9-6 and six in conference play. And 22-7 and seven overall, but all in all, a good year for them. But tonight was all about Kansas, and a win on senior night. And you can catch the celebration next on ESPN3.com. They clinch a share of the seventh straight Big 12 title with the win. Their 11th overall Big 12 championship. And a special night for three seniors. Once again, the final score is 64 51 for the Jayhawks. Up next on ESPN, more college basketball as Utah State takes on New Mexico State from Las Cruces. I'm Mark Jones for Hubert Davis. For our entire crew, there's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. So long from Lawrence, Kansas. Now we send you to the studio with Dari Noka and Jimmy Dykes.